Hi and welcome to another episode of Hereford FC here on Vanilla FM. And today we're going to take a look at the winter transfers for 2030-2031. It's been quite a long time since I recorded a video. Um, it's been quite busy, uh, generally, in life. So, um, apologies for that. And uh, also, in the meantime, um, between the, the last video that I released and this one, FM have announced that they are going to fully license the English Premier League for the next edition of the game for 2025. So that's something to look forward to. Although I don't really play big um, big leagues like that, but um, yeah, um, well, it'd still be nice to have the proper faces um, of the players and everything once we get up to the Premiership, which is, by the way, something that is achievable in this edition of the um, game for me because if we look at the uh, schedule no uh, competitions competitions I've been kicked out of the FA and Carabao Cup um, the semi-final by Manchester for the Carabao Cup so that we got pretty far in that one uh, and for the FA Cup it was uh, just the third round but we got Sunderland so we got kicked out but we are top of the league with seven points ahead and um, looking quite likely that we'll get promoted even without a playoff because even if we drop to second at any point and stay there uh, we still get promoted without a playoff so the Premier League uh, is in sight uh, we've been helped a lot by our new striker um, however in the last few matches he actually was out with injury uh, for a while actually so if you go to I can't even remember is it fitness yeah he tore a hamstring recently uh, he's just recovered from it but he hasn't played a game yet so uh, or has he no no he hasn't no I think this might be his first game back so two months out with um, a torn hamstring uh, for Emra but yeah he's been basically Doing all the goal scoring for us, it probably not in the, uh, yeah no he's still top goal scorer even though we, even though he was out for two months, we still carried on winning stuff um, in the meantime without him, um, so lots and lots of wins recently. Uh, but we are closing up the the season, and um, we basically can't get relegated anymore. But obviously that is a little bit of an obvious statement. But let's have a look at the winter transfers. So, as far as transfers, we actually made some money from a couple of our players, which then help, will help us to fill in the gap that we created, essentially, um, over the years with with the club. It wasn't much, but it was enough to bring in the players that we needed. So Joe McGrath uh, and Max Ross they both went to Northampton which plays in League One. So they are trailing behind in 23rd in League One. So they'll be very good players for those teams. Um, they weren't bad players for us, to be honest, but we could find better. So let's have a look at the transfers. Uh, we have one new... Actually, I made a mistake. Joe McGrath, I was supposed to replace him, and I did. But the player that I replaced him with is actually played for two of the teams in the season and obviously I didn't read the small print so the replacement can't actually play this season but he'll be here for next season I guess so Cole or more you you might I can't pronounce that sorry Cole um, so yeah he be, he's been with us before and we sold him and then we bought him back for 10k so that's pretty good business for us uh, yeah he so he was with us in this league already in the championship because we've been in this league for a while now and then in the space of the same year he played for Dundee he went to Australia on loan and then he came back to us so I think actually I forgot to do this but I think what I'm gonna do is make him eligible for um, under 21s available for 90 minutes there you go so he can play for the under 21s keep his fitness up so that is the first change we made and goalkeepers no change we still got Neil Nolan and we still got Alfie. Alfie has actually played the majority of the season, to be fair. For the other, the other player for the right, where Cole plays, is um, 
still our usual i think he's injured now where is he yeah um tj tj still with us left side we've got one new player um so we've still got harvey aruju uh, there's a bit of interest in him actually, but I ended up not selling him. But whilst I was debating whether or not to sell Harvey, I got someone queued up. Charlie Ward, which is provisionally playing on the right because we don't have players for that. So Charlie Ward, I got him on a release clause of 180k. And, um, and I thought, ooh, in case I sell Harvey, I can get this kid for... Uh, less money and he's, he's not bad he's pretty good we can play in a few positions as well but I ended up keeping Harvey and just letting go of someone that was uh, on loan that I can't remember anymore who it was but yeah so whoever we had on loan there we just released that loan defensive midfield we still have um, Hiroyuki and Marvelous as well, same two. This will probably change because Marvelous is he's retiring. Um, sure, yeah, Marvelous is retiring. So is uh, Hiroyuki actually. So we're gonna have two brand new players next season in this position. Regardless, in the midfield, we still have Nino and David. Nino Masuch and David Moran on loan. And there's actually no changes from here on except. Uh, I went and brought back Seb Ferdinand and really I had a really expensive loan uh, for Ben Hames. Ben Hames is a great player but Seb uh, has been making, making some improvements. So Seb was reintroducing to the squad when he was down in the 21s just helping out. Introduced back up and the other player is still Nathan Lamy. So that's the only change. So we sent back Ben Hames recouped some of that because uh, it was a very expensive loan with additional fees so we recouped some of those fees which then helped us to um, uh, get in some other players and rebalance things um, on the left we still have Mattia and Riley Riley and then at the front we got him at the start of the season and Red Tesco and we still have Max Guthrie. I did debate about getting a different striker. He might be still be here. Nope. There was a different striker I was looking at and then selling Max, but I thought, you know what, that can wait for next season because next season we're going to need new strikers anyway. And we're winning the league, so I don't think it's a priority. Excuse me. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, um, no other news, I think. Youth candidates looking poor. Youth teams, 8th for uh, the under-21s in the 3rd league. And then the 2nd league, 3rd for the under-18s. So that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I don't know if they're still in any cup competitions. Yeah, so we're still in the... We're playing Ipswich for the 5th round of the FA Cup for the under-21... For the under-18s. So that's pretty good. We only lost a couple of games as well this year. So that's good. And the 21s, different story. I don't think there's any cup competitions in this. No. Okay. So different story for the under 21s. They are trailing behind quite a bit. So yeah, everything is looking pretty good for us. Finances wise, pretty bad. We're going to have to do something about that. I'm assuming the stadium expansion is going to get cancelled again because we don't have the funds ready. Um, we actually made a decent amount of money last month because we had that FA Cup round. No, it was FA. No, Carabao Cup with Man City. So we had loads and loads of um, um, money from that, and also that money that we recouped from Ben Hames being returned from loan, and also the two transfers that we did. Is it true? Two transfers. Yeah, two transfers that we did as well. So that was that was that. Um, yeah, you can see that 101.5 million total in fees. So we got essentially half of that back because he only played half of the season. 
with us. And he did well. He did well. He got 21 apps, 6 goals, 4 assists to play the, uh, the match. Uh, he's going back to Stoke now, which plays in the same league, actually. So, essentially gave him back a good player. Um, right, so let's get on with the next match. We are playing Reading next. I already got that. Okay, let's go. So I can't wait for the next edition of the game. It's not too far away now at, um, to what way we are in June. They'll probably announce something next month. Um, and then we can probably get our hands on the beta f from October, mid-October half-term-ish sort of time. I just realized that half-term only makes sense if you're in the UK, otherwise you have no idea what that means. But yeah, mid-October sort of time. So yeah, it's been quite an enjoyable version of the game to play because we've been promoted uh, pretty much consistently and well, yeah, every season until we got to the championship. And now it's, we've been in the championship a while, and then finally it looks like we might win. So it's been really enjoyable to play. The finances in this game work a lot better than in previous versions of the game. I think including the way in which you sell players. It used to be that when you decided you wanted to sell a player, as soon as you tra transfer li uh, listed them, the, the value went down massively. It's not the case now. The, basically, the value stays pretty much the same. So you're actually able to get decent money for the players that you want to get rid of. Which is good. That's not the player I want to get rid of. Is Riley. Riley, let's put you on for Mattia. Start the second half. Looks like Lamy as well. Right, essentially, he probably caught on to this now, but every time a player drops into 6.4 from the second half onwards, they get subbed out. I don't know what they're going to do for the Premier League. I know our stadium is big enough. It meets all the criteria, I think. So we don't necessarily need better facilities for the stadium. Um, but it's just we're going to be missing out on so much money by not having enough room to accommodate everyone. New striker, we're going to put in a new midfield. Alec was just... Um, a youth because Nico Nino is tired, so I just kind of went and found a youth player to just start the game off and um, see how they do. And then Max is going to come out for Casey. unlucky goal because they need oh. it's like he's trying to cut the cross I think almost almost Ningi got on it as well cut it and then just put his foot in I thought Ningi got it as well but maybe he didn't <coughs> We've only got one shot in this whole match. <laughs> it's 
So as I'm recording this, the Euros are going on. England played last night. Um, yeah, it's quite good. I I don't really, to be honest with you, I don't really enjoy um, watching club football, which is kind of weird because I play football manager. So you you'd think I'd be watching club football all the time, but I don't. I never watch club football ever. I don't watch football except international competitions, which is slightly hilarious, really. Um, but yeah, it's probably why I don't really know some of the players that are famous. Like, they might be famous, but I don't really know unless they play for their nation. But I don't really like closely follow the nations either, I just kind of watch the games. So, yeah. I know, obviously, the the obvious ones, but a lot of players that I have no idea who they are. And they're supposed to be famous, but I don't know. Okay, I'm going to leave it there and we come back for the last game of the season, which I'm presuming is just going to be... So... Luton, I think. So I'll come back for that and see how the season went. Thanks so much for watching till the end and take care. Bye-bye.